Well, it's a great day. What's going on, George? Hi, Dr. George C. Frazier, how are you feeling, my man? I, I am doing wonderful. In the words of the great Wilson Pickett, we're going to wait to the midnight hour. <laughs> and we're, right? We're going to wait to the midnight hour, and we're going to give some powerful information. And I just want to say kudos to you, Shay, uh, for your love, for this work, for your commitment to entrepreneurship, specifically to people of color. And man, you, you're doing God's work. Just keep doing it, man. Keep doing it and, and, and make us get up any time of the day and any time of the night to, to get some knowledge. So God bless you for this. this now, this is very unusual for me. Uh, I don't normally do podcasts, uh, you know, around the midnight hour. But, but for you, anything. This is I'm, I'm enjoying it. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Look, I, I know we're behind the scenes, Dr. Frazier, and we're going to get started in a moment. So thanks for that warm introduction to me personally. It feels I feel like it's just you and I having a conversation. Do you mind taking a moment and just kind of give me the backstory? I mean, I'll read your bio later, but can you take the two to three minutes and maybe give us the backstory on who is Dr. George C. Frazier? What journey have you been on? And then what you're up to today? And I know that sounds kind of interesting because it's like, how does a man like you take all of his years and put it in three minutes? But just give me the, the abbreviated version so I can understand who you are and then we'll kick this thing off. I'm a brother that has been committed to black people for as long as I can remember. I'm committed to black people. I'm committed to excellence. I'm committed to personal growth and development, lifelong learning and constant never ending improvement. And every 75 years of my life has in some way been focused on those things. Uh, excellence is, is for me, uh, the key. I mean, if you are about excellence, uh, there's almost no way that you can fail, uh, in this country. Uh, this is a land of opportunity, and uh, I have seized upon every opportunity presented to me, whether it was selling lemonade on the corner of, of Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, New York, uh, starting a housekeeping service for old people uh, uh, in Queens, New York, um, a window cleaning service, snow shoveling service, leaf raking service, um, whether it was cutting grass, you name it. And I did it because I wanted to get the experience. I wanted to meet people. I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to serve people. It has always been what I have been about. And I've always wanted to do it with granular detail and excellence. So if you look at the continuum of my life, if you look over the 75 years of my life, if you look at the things that I've been doing, they have been focused on those three things. Delivering excellence, which means that I had to personally be about excellence, delivering excellence, trying to deliver it to my people. And in every moment that I delivered whatever God has anointed me to do at that moment in time, I tried to teach and I tried to bring others along. In other words, I shared in, in, uh, in, 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 in an unselfish way uh, everything that I had, whether it was with my brothers and sisters for, for work that I had secured uh, but couldn't perform myself. I made sure that they got that work. I got a piece of it. But um, that is really what I'm about at, at my essence. And I've been that way. If you would talk to my sister, Dr. Emma Fraser, she will tell you I, I've been entrepreneurial since six or seven years old. And so there's just something, I don't know if it's in my DNA. I don't know uh, if it's in my environment. I don't know if it was because of a sense of uh, survival. Uh, making a way out of no way. I don't, I don't know what that is. I mean, that's a God thing, but it's been there and it is still there. It is at 75 years old as an elder. And I know I look 35 or 40, but, but you know, black don't crack. Um, so that's, that's basically what I'm about. It's, it's no more complicated than that. Uh, you know, my resume speaks to that in spades. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Dr. Frazier, I know we're going to kick this thing off in just a moment. And you've been doing this for a number of years. And here's a question I've always been curious about. Um, you know, people always say, what's your big why, right? But I'm more curious about why do you keep doing this, man? Um, you know, you could certainly be somewhere on the beach right now. Uh, you could be traveling. You could be with your lovely wife for so many years you've been together. Or you could be with your grandchildren. Why are you still out here fighting the fight, uh, helping entrepreneurs build their business, help people understand networking? Like, I guess the question is, Dr. George C. Frazier, why do you keep doing this, man? <laughs> when are you going to take a break? That's a deep question. 
And I think I keep doing it because I notice that when I'm around my people, when I am learning and when I am teaching, uh, I'm energized. I come to life. I'm a different person when I, than when I am in the quiet of my own space. But when I'm out in public and I can feel the energy of people and I can learn from people, uh, it turns me on. And I think that's just related to the purpose that God has put me here. I am on purpose. There's an old saying that time expands to the work allotted. In other words, if someone gives you a task and they give you two weeks to do that task, it's going to take you two weeks. If they give you the same task and they give you a month to do it, it's going to take you a month. Work expands to the time allotted. But when you're on purpose, when you're, when you're doing God's work, when you're doing what he has put you here to do, the equation reverses. And that is time expands to the work allotted. Okay? So here I am, 75 years old, still doing the work that I love because I am on purpose. I am energized by it. It fires me up. And... It is my key to survival. It is my key to living the best life that Dr. George Fraser can live. And, and, I, and I'm the best when I am teaching, when I am serving, when I am loving, when I am fulfilling the purpose of life, which is very simple. Um, uh, why is the purpose of life simple? Because God doesn't make anything complicated because he needs for everyone to to understand it. So the purpose of life is simple, Che. It is to love, to give, to serve, and to add the highest value to somebody or something every minute of every day. That is the purpose of life. That is why we're here. So when you are on purpose, you are energized. Your fires are burning, right? You are the sun. You are the light. And when you enter a room, you bring that light to others. That's a high. I don't get high. I get high on life and people and love and service. That's my why. That is your big why, Dr. George C. Frazier. I love it how you stay there. You're a big why. Look, we got to get kicked off, by the way. We have so many folks that are out there, by the way. Charlisha's out there. Samuel's out there. Kevin's out there. Annette's out there. Sorrell's out there. Rob Howes is in the house, by the way. Uh, Corrine, I see you. All of them are out there watching right now. Dr. George Frazier, we're going to kick this off. I see you guys. We'll get started in just a second. Man, I like being behind the scenes, and I don't know how these folks got on yet because we haven't sent it out, but they're here. Um, Dr. Frazier, um, take just two minutes, man, and we got to kick off. I do two things. Number one, I want you to kind of share what or frame the conversation, what people should expect. Um, I know you're going to talk about how folks build a business. Take a moment to kind of frame that conversation for them. And then I want you to use um, the saying that I've taken from you, by the way, for 75 years. I figure it's time for you to pass it down, which is the that hashtag stay the course. And I want you to talk first about what you're going to talk about this evening and then talk a little about hashtag stay the course. And for everyone that's watching right now, here's how you give Dr. George C. Frazier a digital applause. Here's how you say we appreciate you, Dr. George C. Frazier. You look right below that video right now. You look right below the video and you say these words, but hashtag stay the course. Hashtag stay the course. You might not even know what it means yet, but he'll break it down. Hashtag stay the course. Dr. George C. Frazier, frame the conversation for this evening and talk about hashtag stay the course. And, and do me one more favor, everyone out there. Hit the share button. No, no. Hit the share button. Dr. Frazier's giving me permission for you to share this to your private group. Share this to your network. You can even copy the link right there in Facebook and you can share it on to Instagram. You can share this message on the LinkedIn. And for all our folks on Apple TV, all our folks on Amazon TV Fire, all of our folks that are watching on Roku, you can pay this message for it. And we appreciate all of our podcasters. All right, Dr. Frazier, take it away, my man. Take it away. Yeah. What's going to happen this evening or this morning? I just want to explain. Stay the course simply means chart a good and righteous course, then stay that course then everything that is due to you will come to you, right? You have to chart the course. Now, remember what I said, uh, uh, everything that is good is not right for you. So you have to make a decision about the thing that is right for you. Once you land on that, stay on that, do it, do it through hell and high water, do it with excellence. Now, what we're gonna talk about tonight 
are the seven keys to succeeding in business. Now, these are my seven keys. I'm going to tell you what has enabled me, the things that I have done that has enabled me to succeed in building and developing and growing and sustaining a business serving black people, the hardest customer on the planet, right, for 33 years. What are the things that I have done to help make my business what it is today? So that's what I want you to know about. This is a very personal kind of conversation. I'm going to say some things that are, may be a bit unconventional. Uh, they may apply to you. I hope that they do, and maybe they don't. But you need to hear it, and I'm going to share it with you. So that's what the conversation is going to be, and it's going to be... Um, Fast, and it's going to be hot. <laughs> Fast and hot. Well, with that being said, I see you, Wesley Samuel. What's up, Margaret? I see you, Rakesha Pittman. She's in the house. With that being said, Dr. George C. Frazier, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. We're going to kick this thing off in five, four, three. It's right. It's showtime. Get ready. Two, one. Let's go, everyone. made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Got money on my mind, I think y'all will get it up. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and our mission is to empower our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources you need to execute three visions that I believe you have. First, you have a vision for yourself. It takes resources to do that. The food that you want to eat, the home that you want to live in, um, the clothes that you want to wear, and for some of you, the type of health care that you want. It takes resources to do that. And then secondly, the vision that you have for your loved ones. I mean, the ones you care the most about. I mean, the ones that you maybe want to send your kids to a school of your choice. I get that. Maybe you want to write a check to pay off your mom or your dad or your family member's mortgage. It takes resource. Some of you pay for your family's health care. I have a mother. I'm so blessed that I have mother dear here and I can still take her out and take her grocery shopping and write a check or swipe my credit card for that but it takes resources and some of you have loved ones that's why you're watching right now we appreciate every single one of you and others of you you have a vision right now for the people you were called to serve God's giving you your talent he's giving you your experience he's giving you your expertise and now you need resources that's revenue to get the right marketing you need resources that's revenue to hire the right consultants you need resources that's revenue to bring the right team to help you reach your audience and so this morning or this evening or this afternoon whatever time you're watching you have the one and only dr george c frazier who's going to share his seven best ideas his seven insider secrets, his seven, whatever you want to call it. I'm asking why he keeps saying number seven, by the way. I'm sure he has some rhyme and reason behind it um, that you need to do in order to be successful. And this is not something he read in a YouTube or uh, read online. It's not a video he watched on YouTube. It's from his 35, 45, heck, 75 plus years so far on this planet. So with that being said, for everyone that's out there, by the way, Brian, we see you. Cynthia Green, it's always a pleasure. Tell James we said hello. Thank you, Ursula, for doing that. Hit the share button. Everybody hit the share button right now and put hashtag stay the course. Dr. George C. Frazier, I'll read your bio later. They'll go Google you at 
George C. <laughs> Frazier. Right. We'll get to that. Can you just give us point number one? Like, I just want to know, like, what's one thing that I can do right now? And I'm being selfish that I can do right now to be successful in my business. I turn it over to you, my brother. The number one thing, and I've written six books on the number one thing, six best-selling books, to include Success Runs in Our Race, The Complete Guide to Effective Networking in the African-American Community, Click, The Ten Truths for Building Extraordinary Relationships, and on and on and on. What's the number one thing? What is, in a sense, the secret to my success? Um, I have chosen my friends wisely over eight passages in life. Each passage is about 10 years. I have rid myself of toxic people in my life. That's the number one thing. Choose your friends wisely. You will be the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you could find out what your five closest friends were earning annually, you will probably be earning about what they're earning, okay? So choose your friends wisely and remove toxic people and blood suckers from your life and work on building. And I've said this a million times and you can't say it enough. You have to build three kinds of networks in your life and you have to work on these networks every minute, every day and every year of your life. First is your personal network. These are your close circle of friends. These are the people that cheer you on and lift you up. Let's call this your network at home. The second network you need to work on through every stage of life is your operational network. These are the people that will help you to get specific tasks done in life. And they platoon in and out of the various passages of your life. They're people that you help and people that help you. That's the second. Let's call that your network at work. The third and critically important is your strategic network. These are the people that are smarter than you. These are the people that are where you want to be. These are the people that will drag you into the 21st century kicking, screaming, and crying. These are the people that can ultimately be your coach or your mentor. Let me just say this. If you are the smartest person in your network, you're in the wrong damn network because you cannot grow. How are you going to grow when you reach up to get help who is reaching down to help you that uh, is where you want to be in life. So let me repeat that. You have to work on a personal network, your close circle of friends, your network at work. This is your operational network and then your strategic network. This is how you grow and you have to be very discerning and very selective and very smart about the people you surround you with yourself with now let me tell you the most important decision about a person in your life will be your significant other i've been married and with the same sister for 48 years you don't think that made a difference in my life you don't think that helped me to be comfortable venturing into entrepreneurship, which I do not recommend for everybody. It is not for everybody. So the most important decision you will make in terms of a person that is attached to you and you are joined at the hip will be your life partner. Mess that up two or three times and see what your life looks like, right? So relationships, relationships, relationships you cannot do it by yourself the fastest way to change yourself is to hang out with people who are already the way you want to be you know if you want to change your life change your relationships 
What am I really saying? Don't spend major time with minor people. People going nowhere want you to go nowhere with them. People doing nothing want you to do nothing with them. If you want to change your life, change your relationships. If you are not where you want to be in life, brothers and sisters, listen to this elder. It is because you do not have the right people in your life. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. It is the people around you. Nothing gets done singularly. You do it in groups. You do it in conclaves. You do it within organizations. This is really what effective networking is about. It's to cultivating, nurturing, and developing those relationships throughout your life. This is biblical. I didn't make this up. There's a wonderful quote in the Bible, John 5.30. It is a direct quote from Jesus Christ. Now, there are 800,000 words in the Bible. Only 1,100 of those words are direct quotes from Jesus Christ. This is a direct quote, John 5.30. And Jesus said, I of my own self can do nothing. Now, this was Jesus. Jesus couldn't get it done on his own by himself in a vacuum. So what's up with you? Why would you think you could do anything significant, anything worth talking about on your own by yourself in a vacuum? You cannot do it. You will have to do it with and through other people. That is the most valuable and the most important asset you will have in your business and in your life. Choose wisely. You will make mistakes. Bless them and release them. Move on. You don't have to hate on them. You don't have to curse them out. You just can quietly bless them and release them and move quietly out of the foreground and the background of their life. Now, I cannot express this enough. People. People. And let me say it again. If you are not where you want to be in life at this moment in time, it's because you don't have the right people in your life. It's not just you. In one way, it is you because you've selected them. But in the deeper way, it's the information, the inspiration, the aspirational attitudes, the, 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 the personal growth and development, the lifelong learning that they can bring to your life. Be open to everything attached to nothing. The best idea wins. Be open to everything attached to nothing. The best idea wins. You don't have all of the good ideas. You may have some good ideas over here and your, your, your comrade or your colleague or your, your running buddy or your homeboy may have a good idea over there and, and you combine the two and you have one plus one makes what? Eleven. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for one and one makes two. Any damn body can do that. You're looking for one plus one making 11. That's what we're all trying to do. Now, this is easy to say, extraordinarily difficult to do. In fact, most people don't do it. This is why most people don't succeed at the levels in which God has put them here to succeed. They have made some bad damn choices about people. And I said earlier that you have to remove toxic people and bloodsuckers from your life. Well, again, this is easy to say and hard to do. Why, Dr. Fraser? Because most of these people are your family and your very close friends. So you're going to have to make some hard decisions. And you're going to have to separate from people that are not helping you move along and to maximize your full human potential. This is difficult. And most people can't do it. So that's the number one thing, people. And it will be for your entire life. People, the right people. 
and you're in charge of that. Powerful, the right people. Folks that are listening out there right now, you listen to the one and only, the man himself, Dr. George C. Frazier. I see folks that are out there right now. Do me a favor, hit the share button. Hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, just put Dr. C, Dr. George C. Frazier is speaking now. Hashtag stay the course. Just 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 hit the share button. Hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, that's your way of paying this message forward. That's the giver's economy. Dr. George C. Frazier showed up and he's going to share his seven best ideas. He just gave number one. And for those folks that are out there watching right now, and I see Kim Yancey is a good friend you've chosen so wisely. He's watching now, by the way. Crystal Sylvia yeah. is watching now. Uh, I see J.S. Singh is watching now. Calvin is watching now. Brother Bedford is watching now. There's so many folks that are watching that you've chosen so wisely. Do me a favor for all of you. Look right below the video. I realize if you listen to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or iRadio, you can't do that. That's okay. But for those folks that are watching live and you're here with us, look below the video and write these words. Number one, choose your friends wisely. Hashtag stay the course. Yeah. That's well, you mentioned two names. There are several names you mentioned, but two in particular, <laughs> Kim Yancey and Brother Bedford. Now, that's an excellent example of bringing triple A people into your life. You entering their life at some inconspicuous way, an inconspicuous time, but you you meet and one and one makes 11. Kim Yancey is a perfect example of that. Kim and I met 25 years ago when he attended a book signing I was doing when Success Runs in Our Race uh, first came out. And we are cut buddies and still work with each other, do good things and do good work with each other and for each other. He has taught me so much. I have taught him much. Um, so that's a perfect example. The same thing with Brother Bedford. These are triple A people who have mad uh, interpersonal skills and mad practical skills with subject matter expertise off the chart. I mean, you can't lose with those kind of people around you. you it's impossible. In fact, they're not going to let you lose. And if they're really good friends, they're going to tell you, no, this is a better way. And if you're really smart, you're going to listen. Right? Yeah. Um, so, Two ex excellent examples of two people who are in my life, who have been in my life for a long time and have added tremendous value to my life, as I hope that I've added value to their life. So I rest my case with just those two people. <laughs> so well said. Ladies and gentlemen, we come back. I see Cynthia Green. She shared it out there. Robert, uh, Robert Antonio is out there. Thanks for joining, by the way. Justin Burns and so many folks that are tuning in to Kia. We appreciate you as well. Thank you, Cynthia Green, for hitting the share button. Everyone who hit the share button, Thank you. We appreciate it. We're going to come back in less than two minutes. By the way, two minutes. Dr. George Frieger is going to give you his top seven ideas. Some of you are like, Shay, I want the notes. Shay, I need to replay. Shay, I need to reconnect. Here's how you can do that. Do something special. No cost. No credit card needed. Dr. George C. Frazier showed up. He's here to give. Text the word makeover. Just look right below. Text the word makeover. We'll make sure you get the notes. Some of you want to know each point as you're going by. Some of you are taking notes like um, Roberta, I think it was, Simmons that I saw out there. She's putting down each point. Number one, choose your friends wisely. We'll be back in less than two minutes. You don't want to miss what's coming up. We're saving the best for last. We're going to go over to Dr. Kenneth Thigpen. She's down in Raleigh, North Carolina, and she talks about every accomplishment comes with action. Choosing your friends wisely, you got to take some action. We'll be back in less than two minutes with the one and only Dr. George C. Frazier, founder of Frazier Nation, the founder of the Power Networking Conference. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll see you in just a moment. Hello, it's your girl, Dr. Kenneth Thigpen, also known as Dr. K, founder of Rise Women's Network. And Rise Women's Network is pleased to present to you hashtag next sister up. I'm with you in the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, and today is my January 1st. Here's your thought of the week. Every accomplishment comes with action. Every accomplishment comes with action. You see, action in the right direction leads to massive success. Now, there's three things when it comes to taking action and reaching your goals. The first one is you must first identify what it is that you want to even accomplish. Now I get it. It's the beginning of 2020 and many of us have written down our goals, our vision and our plan for 2020. Awesome. Number two is we need to identify all of the 
actionable steps that we need to take in order to accomplish those goals. And lastly, we want to prepare, prepare for the best possible outcome. Now, how are you gonna prepare for the best possible outcome? First, you're gonna identify all of the resources you're going to need to accomplish your goal. Second, you're going to ask yourself, do I have access to all of these resources? Thirdly, you need to identify all of the potential obstacles that you could possibly face. And four, now you're gonna take some more actionable steps in order to prevent those obstacles from happening. Here's the thing I know, if you do nothing, you're going to get nothing. So I challenge you, take action, take action, and take more action. It's your girl, Dr. K, make it a great day. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, you the entrepreneur, you the one with the big heart, you the one with the big dreams, to provide you with the resources necessary for you to execute that big vision for the people you were called to serve. And Dr. George C. Frazier, showed up for one reason, one reason only, and that is to give you the resources and to have this private, personal, up-close conversation with someone that's been doing this for so many years, he just gives you his best seven ideas. Whether you like them or not, they're his best seven ideas. And, and mm -hmm. later on after he gives you idea number two, uh, point number two and three, I'm gonna ask him to maybe share with you some, some ways that you can, you can be live. You, you can be there with Dr. George C. Frazier and so many other folks at a, at a conference that he does every single year. We'll get to that. You don't wanna miss that because it's just so amazing, it's incredible. So Dr. George C. Frazier, I was gonna read your bio and get into you being in the Hall of, uh, the Minority Business Hall of Fame, but I'll get to that. Maybe you'll, you'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Give him number two. They're showed up. They're out there right now. They're saying stay the course. Nick Brown. I love Nick Brown. His wife, Ann, is just amazing. He's out there. Wants to let you know he's out there. Ebony Banks, I see you. What's going on? Albert Watkins, it is always a pleasure. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for putting the hashtag stay the course. All right, Dr. Joyce C. Frazier, you just got to number one. <laughs> Choose your friends wisely. I don't know how you follow that with number two. I don't even know what number two is, but I'm here in the front row. Talk to us, my man. Talk to well, us. Well, this is number two for me. Find the right mentors. Mm. Find the right mentors through every step in your life. And they will change, just like your relationships will change. Um, try to envision or have a wish list of important and powerful people that you would like to meet. And some and someday have them mentor you. Now, there's a trick to doing that. There's a trick to getting powerful people to mentor you. And it goes, and it's in sync with one of the basic principles of effective networking. And that is, and this is the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that people make. And that is <clears throat> um, most people network to get something wrong. You network to give. And as you give, you get. You ain't giving. You ain't getting. If you have nothing, it's because you've given nothing that you cannot take out of life that which you have not put into life. So the secret to getting a powerful and important people is to first envision, list in your own, in the quiet of your own mind, who are the people that someday you would like to meet because you like the way they operate, you like the way they comport themselves, you like the way they handle their business, you like the way they look, whatever, whatever it is, develop a short list. Now, I did years ago, and one of the people, there were two people on my short list, Earl Brown, the founder of Black Enterprise Magazine, a hero of mine, and Ambassador Colin Powell. They were on my list. Now, the reason Earl was on my list is because Earl grew up in Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, New York. He was 10 years ahead of me. He was 10 years older than me, but I always admired Earl Brown. I admired the way he dressed. I admire how he built his magazine and put on his events, um, and I always wanted to meet him. 
So I let a couple of friends of mine, I was living in Cleveland. This is just when I had gotten to Cleveland. I've been in Cleveland now about 53 years from Brooklyn, New York. And I had just gotten to Cleveland and I'd gotten my, I'd gotten grounded and I met some really nice and important people and a very close friend of mine, Carol Hoover, who was chairman or president of the Cleveland Growth Association, which I, which is our chamber of commerce. And we were talking and I chatted with her and told her, you know, one day I'd really like to meet Earl Brown. Uh, Earl Graves, I should say. I said Earl Brown. I'm taking yeah, a shot. Earl Graves, yeah. And um, about three months later, she came over to me. She said, George, um, Black Enterprise Magazine is doing a series of networking events. This was in 1985. They're doing a series of networking events in seven cities around the country. They have picked Cleveland because Barbara, his his wife, is a good friend of mine. And they're looking for someone to chair, to voluntary, voluntarily chair this initiative. Would you be interested in doing that? And I said, of course I would. Not only would I be interested in volunteering for it, I'd, I'd love to chair it. And so she talked to Barbara Graves and she agreed and she gave uh, Barbara a little background. I was talking about networking back in those days and, and putting on small um, events called Success Net, uh, Success Through Networking, and, and that's a whole other story. And so finally, I got the chairmanship to be the volunteer uh, organizer of uh, the Earl Graves networking event in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, I put together a team of about 60 people and we had about 800 people sign up and come to this event. In fact, we had more people per capita in Cleveland, Ohio, than they had in New York City where Earl lived. So Earl rolls up into the event. Now remember, this is 1985-86. He's sharp as a tack. He comes in with the governor of Ohio, Dick Celeste. I had never met the governor. Earl was beaming. He had 800 people. He said, man, you did a great job. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you doing this. And uh, he got, got up and made his speech. And he, of course, uh, said some nice things about me. And I met the governor. And I was happy. I had met Earl Graves by serving Earl Graves. So if you want to meet important people, you have to be where important people are. And then you have to find a way to serve them first. That's the mistake that most of us make. Most of us are networking to get something wrong. You network to give, and as you give, you get. So whenever I'm talking with people, whenever I'm networking with people, I, if I'm having a 10-minute conversation with you, you will notice that nine minutes of conversation is going to be about you. One minute is going to be about me. You're going to ask me some questions. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to answer those questions quickly and then I'm going to art artfully turn the conversation on you, ask you a bunch of questions. Why? Because I am searching through my mental Rolodex and the resources that I have. I'm trying to know about you and to see if there's something I can give you first. I believe that the first person that gives first in any relationship wins. I'm in a contest with you. I never tell you what the contest is. I'm trying to give you first. I wanted to give Earl Graves something first and I gave him the best networking conference of the seven cities that he did it in we parted ways I did not blow up his phone I talked to him maybe a couple of times a year I saw him at the Congressional Black Caucus and you know, a couple of things I if I saw an article that was related to Black Enterprise magazine and I'd cut it out and I'd send it to him um, and I just kept in touch with him years go by in fact it was six years that went by. I was offered an opportunity to write a book on networking. The name of the book was Success Runs in Our Race. I got a magnificent deal from HarperCollins, an incredible offer. I wrote this book and they asked me, do I know any important people who might read the book they could send the manuscript to and maybe do a blurb? I said, well, you know, I, I did some, I know Earl Graves. Um, uh, we did some things together. It was five or six years ago, but, but I think he might do it. So I sent the manuscript to Earl. Earl looked at the manuscript, read it. He said, this is unbelievable. This is magnificent. He said, not only will I give you an endorsement, a testimonial or blurb, whatever you want to call it, 
We have never done a book excerpt in Black Enterprise Magazine. Right? We've never done a book excerpt. I would like this to be the first book excerpt for our magazine. He said, not only will we make it a book excerpt, George, I'm going to put you on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine. Can you all see that? Woo! Yeah. Right? Yep. There we go. Perfect. Now, I had no in knowledge of me writing a book in 1985. I did not do it because I wanted to be on the cover of Black Enterprise magazine. I did it because I wanted to serve Earl Graves and I wanted Earl Graves and I wanted to do the right thing. Fast forward seven years later, that right thing ended me up on the front page, the cover of Black Enterprise magazine when Success Runs in Our Race was released. In late June of 1984, I was on the cover in July of 1984, and that changed the trajectory of my life. Get the right mentors. Get the right mentors. Serve them. And it will be almost impossible to fail, right? But don't serve them in a way that you're asking them for something. This is how I met Colin Powell. I don't want to get into that story, but it was the same way. Serving. Can you give us, can you give us the one minute version, man? You can, how can you leave us out there and say, well, you know, I met Colin Powell the same way, but, you know, I, General Colin Powell. So I can't tell you. Look, well, I know we don't got so much time, man, but can you, can you take a minute and just tell us? You got to give us the abbreviated version. For everyone is, you got to give it to us. How can you leave us I, hanging? I always wanted to meet Colin Powell. Colin Powell's from Harlem, right? Okay. All right. And this Talk was the epitome of the macho, beautiful, he's Caribbean, uh, black male. And um, so I found out that Colin Powell was giving a speech in Cleveland mm -hmm. at the Sheridan in downtown Cleveland. This, it was a luncheon speech. I got there at 11 o'clock because if you've ever read my book, uh, uh, success runs in our race. I say to people, if you want to meet important people, be where they are, but most importantly, be early and be down front because you never know what can happen if you're down front and if you're early. So I got there at 1030. There was a luncheon for noon. So nobody was really around. And so I peeked into the ballroom just by happenstance. Who was sitting reading the New York Times on the first row of round tables in the ballroom, Colin Powell. So my, the small hairs on the back of my neck went up. So I quietly walked in. I walked over to uh, Ambassador Powell, General Powell, whatever you want to call him. And I said, uh, uh, General Powell, uh, would you like some coffee? So he looks up at me and he said, Yes. I said, I'll, I'll get that for you. So I run out of the ballroom. I find the waiter and I tell the waiter that General Powell wants some coffee. Can you please get him some coffee with cream and sugar and, uh, and some white gloves? And he said, sure. So he comes back out and he's going to take it to Colin Powell. I said, no, 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 no. Give it to me. Let me do it. I put on the gloves just like he would have put it on. I took that a tray of coffee and cream and sugar nicely done and took it over to Colin Powell, put it on his table and he poured whatever he wanted to pour. And then I went away and sat about two tables to his right because I knew he was right handed and that he would favor his right. And that at some point in time, he might look over and say something. But that was a risk I was taking. Sure. I sat there for about 20 minutes reading something. And I caught his eye and he looked at me and he, he asked me to come over and he said, what's your name? And we went through a conversation. He said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, you know, I, I, um, I, I have a small business. Uh, it focuses on networking. Uh, it focuses on volunteerism. He said, oh, really? Is, is, is that right? He said, yeah. He said, you know, I just started a national volunteer initiative. Would you like to be a part of it? I said, I'd be honored. He said, here's my card. I'm going to give you my number. Give me a call. 
and you can be a part of our national volunteer movement. I think that's really great. I said, thank you, Mr. Powell. And I took the card and I did not bother him. And of course, I called him and we remain good friends to this day. Now, let me ask our audience a question. Don't you believe that I had studied and knew everything about Colin Powell and what, in fact, he was focusing on at this moment in time in his life, and it was a national volunteer initiative. And why do you think when he asked me what I did, I made sure that I told him that's what I was doing? And in fact, I was doing that. So if you want to meet important people, be where they are and know something about them. Understand what they need. Serve them first. That's my story, Colin Powell. That's that's the three minute version of it. <laughs> Man, you can take as much time as you want. You're like an overtime right now. What a powerful story. For those folks that are out there listening, Linda Reese wants you to know that she's in the house. Cheryl Good is in the house. Cheryl Wood's sister said she's in the house. Ken Warren Martin said, What's up? She's out there, by the way. Jennifer Harris is in the house. She's there. Rick Giles is in the house. So many folks out there watching right now. For everyone that's out there, do me a favor. We come back. Dr. Joyce Frazier's on number three. He's like in overtime right now. I don't know where he gets the energy. This passion he comes out that is inside of him to want to serve. It's just like you would think the guy was like 25 years old getting ready to go run a marathon tomorrow. He gets so fired up. But do me a favor if you're out there. Um, here's how you give Dr. Joyce C. Frazier a digital applause. And a digital applause. The way you give Dr. Joyce C. Frazier a digital applause is you look right below the video and you say thank you. You look right below the video and say we appreciate you at Dr. George C. Frazier or Dr. George C. Frazier, thank you so much. Dr. George, Fre Fre Dr. George C. Frazier, I love you. Whatever comments you want, I want you to express that. He'll get a chance. He'll get a chance to go back in and read the comments, right? Right now, he's focused. He's, he's right here with you. He's in the present moment. But by you putting those comments below, by you hitting the heart button, by you hitting the share button, you're just paying this message forward. Dr. George C. Frazier, before we got started, he didn't ask me for a cash app payment. He didn't say, Shay, let me wire you some, you need to wire me some money. He didn't say, Shay, swipe this credit card. He said, Shay, there's a need out there, and God's given me a gift to serve. And, and he doesn't do this. I mean, this is, this is probably a $25,000 conversation at the level we're having at right now. This is the seriousness of it. So from everyone in the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe that likes to love on each other, hug on each other, support each other, do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video, and I want you to write I appreciate you. Thank you. Because one thing I know for sure that I know that I know that I know every single one of you as entrepreneurs, you can always make more money. You're going to make more money. You can make more money. You can make more money. But this is something that Dr. George C. Frazier taught me. Yeah, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. And so right now, he's giving you the most precious resource he has, which is his time. He cannot get this time back. So let's show him that appreciation. We come back in less than two minutes. We're going to have Dr. George C. Frazier go ahead and, and really break down point number three. Break down point number three for you. And this big, is very... Big. It's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Now, some of you are already over at, at FraserNation.com. I know you're Googling Dr. George C. Frazier. Some of you are over Googling him on, on, on Facebook right now. Yeah, he has an Instagram account. The brother's bad, by the way. He has an Instagram account. And we come back. I'm going to ask Dr. George C. Frazier, can they connect with you on Instagram as well? And I'm going to ask him, can you share what business you have because you want to network with someone else? Look, I got to go to San Shea. We got to go to commercial. We got to go to commercial. I get it. But you got the man, the legend in the house. Um, um, we're going to go now. We're going to go over to the one and only Rob Howes. Rob Howes is over in Laurel, Maryland. He says, be present where you are. And he talks about the significance of today is my January 1st. That's one of our core values here at the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. We'll be back in just one moment. You guys look right below and give him some love there. Jahara says, thank you so much. Sanar, hey, Sanar says, I appreciate you, Dr. George C. Frazier. Robert S. Rich says, thank you, Dr. George C. Frazier. Linda Reese is out there participating, says, we appreciate you, love you. She's a longtime friend, by the way. Bridget Carter says, we appreciate you, Dr. Frazier. Uh, Albert Walken says, we appreciate you. I know some of you are listening online. I get it. What's up, Tasha Taylor? I see you. Jennifer Harris, I see you. I know my Apple listeners on Apple TV. I know, I know. You always say, Shay, you, you leave us out. No, no, no. Go over to Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. Connect with Dr. George C. Frazier. We'll be back in just a moment. We're having fun. It's like happy hour with Shay Brown and Dr. George C. Frazier. We'll be back. Take it away, Rob. Hey, guys. All right. Me and Daddy are here. All right, I, um, I'm doing a video. I got a question. No, it's not a question. This is a video where I'm telling people something. 
I'm telling them that this today is their January 1st. Today is your January 1st, Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe, because today is the only day you got. Because tomorrow's not promised, and yesterday is gone. So the reason why today being your January 1st is significant because it keeps you from procrastination. Procrastination is the destroyer of dreams. Yeah, it's the destroyer. It's the killer of dreams. So take action. Be present where you're present. That's the real gift. Be present where you are present. That is the real gift. Today is your January 1st. Say, say today. Today. Say today is your January 1st. Today is your January 1st. Say it loud. Today is your January 1st. That's it. Don't forget it. It's a great day. My name is Shea Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one, number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and that is to empower, that is to inspire, that is to provide you with the resources necessary to execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And Dr. George C. Frazier, one of our core values here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show is today is my January 1st. Today is my January 1st. And that mantra represents a restart. That mantra represents a reboot. That mantra today is my January 1st means you get a new beginning anytime you need. And that mantra today is my January 1st. For those folks that are new, that are hearing it for the very first time, the reason it's so important to us is that as Human beings, we believe that every day, every day that you're out there, every day that you're out there, you have an opportunity to make a decision. And that's what today is my January 1st represents. It represents you making a decision. So you either make a decision, you're going to go to the gym, or you're going to sit on the couch. That's a January 1st moment because it can change the trajectory of your life. You either eat a hamburger and french fries, or you eat those celery, you eat the fruits and vegetables. You either spend the money on a new pair of shoes, or you send that money and you put it into a legacy account for a future generation. See, when you make, when you have a January 1st moment that happens every single day, when you make that decision, it changes the trajectory of your life. I'm going to ask Dr. George C. Frazier to take a moment and just talk about the significance of today is my January 1st and why it's important to have the mindset that on any given day you get a restart. You can make a decision. You can change your mind, you can change your story, and you can change your life. Today is my January 1st. Everyone out there, do me a favor, look right below the video, look right below the video, and if you know that this is your year, you know that this is your month, you know this is your time, you make a decision right now that today is my January 1st, and for Dr. George C. Frazier, so I can frame the conversation, I want him first to say, what was his January 1st moment? What was the moment that he knew that he was going to plant a flag, he was going to be an entrepreneur, and he was going to change the trajectory of life? of other entrepreneurs what was his january first moment what was that moment he said this is it and then talk about the significance not only of making a decision but the importance of today is my january one we all get a new start dr dr george c frazier take it away my man well i can tell you this on january one i made a resolution and i'm going to reveal to you what my resolution was and i want to say this and still be loved I resolved that I would no longer debate Negroes that Harriet Tubman would have shot. Let me repeat that for you. You need to make the same resolution, my brothers, that you will no longer debate and deal with Negroes that Harriet Tubman would have shot. This is what I was talking about earlier around toxic people. I am very, very, very careful about how I spend my time with people. I will tell people, do anything but don't waste my time. I will get more money, but I will not get any more time. And I don't know how much time I have, but I am wasting it. So every minute of every day of my life, the evaluation that I am making in the quiet of my own mind, is this the highest and best use of my time? Now, you may not grasp that at 30 or 40 or 50, but when you get my age, you will understand what I'm talking about. It is like I blinked my eyes 
This is no bullshit. This is like I blinked my eyes and I'm 75 years old. I am running out of time. Now, I reflect back on that often. Did I use the time that God had given me wisely to this point? I'm pleased with my decisions on how I use my time, but I'm even more critical now because I'm running out of time. And the less time you have, the more you will think about how you use it. I urge you to think about how you use it now while you have some time. Use your time wisely. One of the seven things that I've always focused on was setting goals. If you were to go to my office, I'm not in my office now, I'm in my home, and you would look on my desk right now, there is a little spiral binder, six by nine. And um, every page is full. Every page represents a day. Every page has about 25 lines on it. Every line on every page is full on each day. In other words, Every day, I set goals. I put the amount of time I'm going to spend on that goal. I total that up, and it may work, come out to 8 or 9 or 10 or 12 hours of work that day. But the great pleasure I get every single day, this, is sound, this sounds so simple, but the greatest pleasure I get every single day is checking off something on that list I completed that day. And I do not go home until every box is checked off. And it may be something as simple as have a conversation with Kim Yancey, for one reason or another, or have a conversation with uh, Brother Bedford. Conversations take time. But that's what I want to get done today. And it typically is about 20 to 25 things. And I do not go to bed until those things are done. And then I fall into bed totally exhausted like I'm going to do tonight because I'm going to finish around 1230 or whatever the time may be. But remember, I started at 6. Right? So I love going to bed tired. I love falling to sleep exhausted because it doesn't take me any time to fall asleep. I've used my full self up this entire day. I am exhausted. There's nothing left in me. And when I hit that pillow within five minutes, ask my wife, I am out and I'm happy and I am pleased because I've used my time wisely. And I have really sort of done that probably for 35 years or so. And I've lived a very productive life. So my January 1st is really every day. Because every day I am granular about how I spend my time, who I spend it with, is it the highest and best use of my time. And there are things that I will pay people to do that I could easily do, except for the time that it takes. I don't wash my own damn car. I could. But for 10 bucks, I'm going to spend a half hour or 45 minutes of my life washing a car when I can pay somebody $10 to do it. So there's certain things you pay people to do for you. They have to get done. But it's not the highest and best use of your time. And you have to make those decisions every day. Now, if there's a debate that I have with my wife, and it's with love, it is about that. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to work, and da my darling Nora Jean Fraser says, Sweetheart, can you take this down to the basement for me? And it's a stack of boxes, about 15 boxes. I said, uh, I got to go to work. Uh, when I get home, I'll, I'll allocate my time to do that, but... 
at the moment, that's not the highest and best use of money. So we debate about that. So you may debate about that, but you must mind your time. Use it wisely. You don't know how much you have and you don't want to know. Use it wisely. Powerful, powerful. Took you off message, man, but I appreciate you taking time to share that with the audience. He's speaking from the heart. You're hearing the one and only Dr. George C. Frazier, the founder of Frazier Nation, the founder of the Power Networking Conference, and just the bad brothers. You read his bio, the most extensive bio, which was a short bio. (laughs) I think that we've ever sent out, by the way, but it is the man, the legend himself. Um, For those folks that are out there like uh, Karen Cherry, we appreciate you. She's watching and listening right now and supporting you. B. Jeter is out there. Jeter. B. Jacqueline Jeter, I hope I got that right, is out there, and so many other folks. Dr. Frazier, I know that you might not get to all seven, because that's just how you roll sometimes. But for those folks that are listening, you're like, I want to get the replay of this. I need to hear this message again. There is no cost, all right? There is no cost. There's no investment. There's no gimme. We come to give. You text the word makeover. Text the word makeover. Text the word makeover to the number right below, which is 202, I'm sorry, 202 nine 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 three five one five again two oh two nine 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 three five one five this text the word makeover and we'll make sure you get the notes it's time for you to make over your business and apply if you can't apply all seven principles pick one <laughs> choose your friends wisely i'm just joking all right dr frazier give us number three my man and then after number three we're going to talk a little bit and take a break for a second and talk about the power networking conference for those folks that want to be in a room of other folks that are just like you um other folks that have an interest but first Give us number three. You were sharing seven of your best ideas in order to have a successful business. Number three, please. Well, I've given you three already, right? You're setting goals and using your time wisely. Oh, it's number uh, three. Setting of those goals. I just sort of slipped that in there so that we (laughs) can move this along. Uh, But, but, but. uh, Give us number four then. Give us number four. I did it. I did it out of sequence, right? But but really, number three, although you, I put setting goals ahead of it because it was just the perfect time to talk about it as it yeah. relates to time, um, number three is a big one. Now, you will notice that many of the things that I talk about in terms of the seven priorities for developing you and thus your business are people-related. This is a big one. This is a big one. Emotional intelligence. What is your emotional IQ? People who are emotionally intelligent tend to be empathetic. They're able to see points of view. They're open-minded. They bounce back from challenges. There are three things that make you up as a human being. Your IQ your personality, and your EQ. Your IQ, whatever it is, it is. It cannot be changed. That is really a measurement when you take the IQ exam of your capacity to learn. And it is whatever it is. You cannot change that. Your personality, you can take an exam for that to help you understand what type a personality you have, generally speaking, and you cannot change that. The only one of the three things that make you up as a human being, other than the ten systems that run your biological body, is your emotional intelligence. That's the third thing. You can change that. In fact, I recommend that you purchase a book. You can pick it up at the airport, pick it up at Barnes and Noble, pick it up at Amazon. Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Emotional Intelligence 2.0. It's the best book I've written. I've not written. I've read all of the books written on emotional intelligence. It's a new science. And when you buy Emotional Intelligence 2.0, the book, there's a test in the back that you take before you take it online, before you read the book that rates your EQ and then once you read the book and it's a wonderful read you go through exercises then you take the test again President Obama had about a 98 out of 100 emotional intelligence EQ one of the reasons 
he was just magnificent in coalescing and organizing and inspiring people. Emotional intelligence essentially is the management of your five most important emotions and using the management of those emotions to cultivate, nurture, and develop relationships at work, at home, and in the community. It is your ability to lead, to inspire, to love, to empathize, to show compassion with other people. It's huge. You could have a 150, you could be Mensa IQ. But if you have the personality of a box of rocks, you ain't going nowhere. Work on your emotional intelligence. Work on your EQ. You can fix that. Very few people will tell you that you have the personality of a box of rocks, that you couldn't motivate a barrel of monkeys who are already motivated. That's huge. I tend to be attracted to and attract people with high EQs. Again, I say that with humility, I'm not bragging, but it's one of the reasons that the people that who are most successful, like the, the Kim Yanceys of the world and the brother Bedwards and the Cheryl Will, they are wonderful people to be around. Emotional intelligence is the second skill that you, it's the, uh, it's the third skill that you have to develop if you're going to succeed. That's number, it's, it's number three, I, I did it out of sequence, I, I did it, that's the fourth thing we talked about, but it's actually number three. Wow, number three is, it just gets better and better and better. Number three, emotional intelligence. If everyone's out there watching right do, now, do me a favor. Hit the share button. Hit the share button and pay this message forward. When you hit the share button, just put Dr. George C. Frazier is speaking now. Hashtag stay the course. Just put Dr. George C. Frazier is speaking now. Hashtag stay the course. And when you come back, I'm going to ask and repeat what hashtag stay the course represents. And then I want to talk a little bit just for a moment about what he's doing now um, with Frazier Nation and with the Power Networking Conference. And I asked him to give me the last, I think, three points that he has, and we'll run through those. All right. But, you know, hey, <laughs> he's dropped about. 150 golden nuggets throughout the conversation so far, right? I don't know how many more nuggets he can drop wrapped in these stories, but he's done it. For you out there, hit the share button. When you hit the share button, do me a favor. Just put, I share. Like, after you hit the share, if you did it before, do it again. Hit the heart button. Hit the like button. That's your way of saying, Dr. George C. Frazier, I share and I care. We're going to go over now to the one and only Dr. Kim Warren Martin. And one of the things that Dr. Kim Warren Martin talks about is that you have to be able to accomplish what you start, but you have to make space for what you want. You've got to make space for what you want. Let's see what Dr. Kim Warren Martin is talking about. She's down in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. We'll be back in less than two minutes with Dr. George C. Frazier. Hashtag stay the course. Someone write that below. Hashtag stay the what? Stay the course. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey there, happy entrepreneurs. This is Dr. Kim Warren Martin founder of Successful and Fulfilled. Excited to bring you my thought of the week here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. This week's thought is make space for what you want. And notice I said make, not get, because we all live very busy lives. And unless we're intentional about positioning ourselves for success and fulfillment, it won't just happen. And just because something was right for you in the past doesn't mean it's right for you today. So how do you let go? Well, a great first step is to begin to track how you're spending your time to help you know exactly what you might need to let go of. So here are three simple things you can do to get started. Step one is to make a commitment that you're actually going to track your time because it's going to take some energy and yes, time from you. <laughs> Step two is to get a journal and track the following three things hour by hour for five days and make sure that two of those days are weekend days. So hour by hour, track the activities you're engaged in, capture the feelings of each present moment as you're engaged in those activities, and then write down any comments, thoughts, or suggestions in the present moment that could make it better for you. Do that for five days, 
And step three is on day six. And there you want to review what you wrote, looking for common feelings, thoughts, and emotions. So you, then you can group those activities by feelings, emotions, and thoughts. And based on the energy they're giving you or pulling from you, then you can begin to develop a plan to remove things from your plate. Ann Lander said, some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of great strength. However, there are times when it takes more strength to know when to let go and then do it. This is Dr. Kim Warren Martin, founder of Successful and Fulfilled, encouraging you to make space for what you want. Until next time, make it a great day. Back over to you, Shay. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide the resources necessary in order for you to execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And we're here with the one and only, the legend himself, Dr. George C. Frazier, who has mentored so many folks, has shared so many lessons, and someone that took myself and Trevor Otts underneath his wings many years ago, and we served at one of his conferences, and we showed up to do something called social casting, which was a term Trevor created at the moment, and said we would be there, and the conversation started there from serving. Uh, Dr. George C. Frazier, before we talk about the Power Networking Conference, and before we talk about hashtag stay the course, I'd like to take a moment and let you know a segment that we do called Champion's Creed. And the Champion's Creed is something that I'll read. It's a poem that was given to me by my mentor about 15 years ago. It's a poem that we read that kind of states something we should do in good times and bad times. It's about being a champion. And I'm going to show it to the audience. And for those folks that are used to this episode that we do in a few minutes here, um, you can, you can, what the whole Champion Creed is about, it's about you patting someone else on the back. It's about you representing someone else, about you supporting someone else. All night we've been saying, I'm going to do this, and I'm a this, and I'm a that. Right now we take about a minute and we tell someone else that you are a champion. Hashtag never give up. So how do you participate? You look below the video and you write the words, you are a champion, and, and never give up. And imagine that you're on a marathon, and you're not in the marathon. I've run five marathons, by the way, but you're not in the marathon. You're on the side. And you're handing out the water, telling me you're a champion. You're giving them a high five and telling me you're a champion. You're encouraging them and telling them to keep putting one foot in front of the other foot in front of the other foot. Some of them are very successful. And the more successful you are, the more pressure you have. And some are struggling right now. So I'm going to show the champions creed. And Dr. George C. Frazier, how you can participate in, um, in a short period of time, very short period of time, is um, to answer the one question. Um, the folks are watching right now, and they're probably thinking you've never had a failure in your life. They're probably thinking life's been perfect for you. 75 years, you've got 350 wars, citations, you've written six bestseller books, you're hanging out with some of the best of the best, you've got this power networking conference, you've got Frazier Nation, you've got six honorary degrees, you've done so much in business. But I said, guys, never failed. I don't know if you have, I'm not, I've heard so many of your stories, and I don't know what you want to share, but maybe you share a business or a challenge you had, and how did you bounce back? Um, and, and, and for those folks that are listening, it's just to let you know that maybe Dr. George T. Frazier is just like you. You know, he makes some decisions and they don't work out. But we'll find out how he was able to turn his thing into a champion. Now, let me, let me put this up. I'll read this in 30 seconds. I'm going to put this up so you guys can all see this on the screen. I'll read the Champions Creed. As I do that, I want you to look right below the video. And I want you to write, you are a champion. Hashtag never give up. The Happy Entrepreneur Champions Creed. I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying, and keep trying, and keep trying. So for everyone that's out there as an entrepreneur is wondering, wow, things don't, don't work out. Wow, there's some failure out there. I'm going to ask Dr. George C. Frazier. If, if, he's not, if you're not comfortable, it's okay, Dr. Frazier, but will you share a time where, heck, <laughs> Things didn't work out for you. And then how did you turn that around and how did you uh, use these skills you're teaching us to be a champion yourself? Because life smacks some of us in the face. Some of us shoot ourselves in the foot and others of us just bad decisions. Things happen. Talk to us, if you would, about being a champion and why yeah. that's important. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Well, I eat failure for vitamins. <laughs> uh, I have basically failed my way to success. I mean, there is no one that I know of any significance, certainly in the world of business, that has not failed. This is how we learn. This is one of the obstacles. This is part of it. Failure, actually you learn more from failure than you do 
form success. So when I decided to leave Procter and Gamble, my six-figure elite bougie job in brand uh, with P&G, um, much to the uh, consternation of my wife, uh, and take on the the challenge of entrepreneurship. This was 33 years ago. Um, we had we were we had the velvet handcuffs of, of, of corporate America. We were living the corporate dream, but it wasn't fulfilling for me. And I took on this challenge of starting a new business. And um, the the interesting thing about <clears throat> uh, sales and marketing and leadership at Procter and Gamble, you, you have you have sales and marketing responsibility, but you don't have profit responsibility. That's not your role. How much profit a, a tube of toothpaste make? That's not your role. Your job is to get it out into the marketplace and get it into the consumer's hands. That's what I learned, and that's what I did very, very well. I did not learn how to make a profit from Procter & Gamble, although I spent 13 years there. So when I go out into business, um, I get started. And uh, things are going well uh, in the early stages, and we're growing. And um, we put out a new product called Success Guide, the networking guide to black resources uh, in Cleveland. And it, we made a lot of money doing it. It was the first one of its kind. It was coffee table quality. Remember now, this is, this is uh, 30-something years ago. Uh, it was competing really with, the, the, I don't know if you remember the black pages. Well, I got greedy. And I decided to move from publishing one success guide to seven success guides. In other words, I was trying to grow too fast. I did not learn really how to pace myself, how to manage uh, the money and the cash flow of the business. And I was growing too fast. That ultimately led me into bankruptcy, not just business bankruptcy, because when you're a small business, you sign for everything and you put all of your assets at risk. This is what banks want who loan you money to do business. So not only did I have personal bankruptcy, I had a uh, a business bankruptcy and personal bankruptcy, but not only that, because I was such a high profile person and popular person in Cleveland at that time, it made the front page of our daily newspaper with my picture of me on my book, Success Runs in Our Race, George Fraser Files Bankruptcy on the front page of your daily newspaper. So not only did I go bankrupt, I did it publicly. So, we basically lost everything. I'm still married, and I'm doing 50 times better. It was just an obstacle. It was something I had to go through. It was something I had to learn. Now, my favorite quote outside of the Bible is a quote by Marcus Aurelius. Here's the lesson, y'all. Marcus Aurelius was one of the five great Caesars. And it was Marcus Aurelius who said, the impediment to action advances the action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Let me repeat that for you. The impediment to action advances the action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Let me say that another way. The obstacle is the way. Where there is no obstacle, there is no way. What is the first thing God does when he gives you an assignment that he feels that you're ready for? He puts an obstacle in your way. And your job is to, is to find a way over, around, through, or under the obstacle. And when you do, you get an attaboy and an girl, and then you get your next assignment at a slightly higher level. And then the next thing that, that God does is he puts an obstacle in your way. And when you look back over your life, that is your life. It is overcoming obstacles. 
That was an obstacle. That's all it was. And the lessons I learned from that failure, because you learn more lessons from failure than you do from success, has taken me to the top of the mountain. And I would not be at the top of the mountain, I don't believe, had I not dramatically failed. I learned lessons from that, powerful lessons. And my life was changed. The trajectory of my life and the lessons of my life. So that is another one of the seven things. And that is to consume content. Be committed to personal growth and development, lifelong learning, and constant never-ending improvement. To be intellectually curious, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, I love my people, but most of us are not intellectually curious enough. If you want to be successful, if you want to have a successful business, if you want to be conversational, you have to be an inch wide and a mile deep in your subject matter expertise or your product or service. And then you have to be a mile wide and an inch deep in matters of the world, which means you got to read. Not just stuff written by black people. Yes, read that. But there's other stuff. You want to be able to talk about something more than the weather and football or Beyonce. You have to be conversational. That's part of the skill of a high emotional intelligent person. Is to be able to talk about many things. Failing is part of it. Obstacles is part of it. Get used to it. And from zero to 50, all you're doing is learning. That's all you're doing. From zero to 50, you're learning. Those That is not the most productive years of your life. The New England Journal of Medicine just came out with a massive study of 20,000 people on what are the three most productive periods of your life. You know what the three most productive periods of your life are? The number one most productive period of your life is between 60 and 70. Number two is between 70 and 80. And number three is between 50 and 60. So from zero to 50, you're just learning. You're fucking up. You're making mistakes. You're failing your way to success. That's what life is. You ain't seen nothing yet. You've done nothing yet. You've got to get over 50. Frank Lloyd Wright one of the great architects of America who built the Guggenheim Museum on Fifth Avenue. I watched it be built when I was growing up as a child in New York. He completed his magnum opus at 91 years old. The average age of a pope is 76. You ain't done nothing yet. So fail. Overcome the obstacles. Learn. And if you don't learn from your failures and your mistakes, you're going to keep repeating them until you learn them. And some people never learn. And you said that about many people. You shake your head and say, man, you never learn. What are they doing? They're repeating the same damn thing over and over and over. So my bankruptcy took me to the top of the mountain. And I shed tears when I think about it. I've received the president from uh, uh, President Obama a presidential lifetime achievement award. And remember, I grew up in foster care. My mother became mentally ill when I was two years old. I was put into an orphanage, stayed in an orphanage from two to five. Then nobody would take 11 children because it was 11 of us, eight boys and three girls. And then we were put in, broken up into threes and put into fo toxic foster homes. So I started with zero, less than zero. Life is life. It's just what it is. And you have been programmed because you're here. I know you're here to do something because God doesn't waste his bullets. 
So you're here to maximize the potential that God has put in you, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the obstacles, regardless of the failures. Hell, that knuckle asshole that we have as a president, he filed bankruptcy five times. And the other thing that black people are afraid of is this whole idea of bankruptcy. Are you freaking kidding me? It is a capitalistic tool to start all over again. White people are not afraid of bankruptcy. In fact, if they say if you're in the venture world and you're starting new businesses and, and trying to get into the, the Internet and tech bubble, that one of the questions they ask you is, is you ever filed bankruptcy? That was a that was a you, you, you get an attaboy for that. So I'm not ashamed of it. I learned from it, and I have climbed the top of the mountain because of it. It's your story. So in there, you got all seven of them. Wow. I mean, double powerful, double powerful. Um, what we're going to do, Dr. Joyce C. Frazier, I know you're like in triple overtime at this, play, at this point. Um, what we're going to do... <laughs> You know it, don't you? But you wrap that thing in a bow. What we're going to do is two things. For those folks that are out there, those folks out there, look right below the video. Show a little love. Hit the heart button. Just put hashtag stay the course. Hashtag stay the course. Hashtag stay the course. Now, I know some of you are entrepreneurs. I'm going to ask Dr. George C. Frazier what his Instagram handle is. And many of you, you can post your Instagram handle right below. Like, you can look right below and say, here is my Instagram handle. Now, if you don't have Instagram, that's just a problem, okay? But other business owners want to connect with you. Now, if Dr. George C. Frazier has an Instagram handle, which I do know, by the way, then I know, <laughs> as he would say, what's up with you, right? And some of you want to go back and look over his body of work. You don't want to just hear what he has to say. He has a body of work on Instagram. He has a body of work on Facebook. He has a body of work that's already in the libraries. And then when we come back, I'm going to ask him to go ahead and give a bonus. Yeah, talk about hashtag stay the course. This is my favorite. And I'm going to ask him to talk about Power Networking Conference and FraserNet. Then I'm going to ask him to close with one of my favorite, which is when he talks about what the difference is between good and what the difference is between amazing. It's, it's, it's just it's one of my favorite all time. He doesn't even remember when he first told that story and I first heard it uh, through Emmett Peace about eight years ago. And that forever changed my life. It's one of the things I used to quote all the time and talk about all the time. And I want him to share that with you. But I want you to get the seven things first, by the way. I want you to get the seven things first because it, it, it will change you. Um, and then we're going to close up. So here's what we're going to do. Look right below the video. I'm going to ask Dr. Frazier real quick. Dr. Frazier, what is your Instagram handle? And uh, do you want me to give it to him or do you know your Instagram Yeah, give handle? it to him. It's George Frazier. I think it's, it's, I think it's George Frazier, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. That's it. George Frazier. And Frazier spelled, you guys should all know, it's, his Instagram handle is G.C. Frazier. G.C. Frazier. G.C. Right. Frazier. That'll take you right to Instagram. And then don't worry, Dr. Frazier likes to read. He'll go read these comments, by the way. That's just the type of guy he is. He'll go back and scroll through at some point, maybe see some of your comments, see some of you, what you're doing on Instagram. Look right below the video and post your Instagram handle. Let's all connect outside of here. Many of you over at the Happy Entrepreneurs Tribe. Many of you are type text the word makeover to 202-999-3515 because you want the replay. You want the notes. Ain't no cost. We're not here to charge anything, but you got to hear this a second or third time. And others of you want to be able to connect. If you listen to the podcast, it's okay. You can participate. If you're listening to the replay or you listen to us on Apple TV or Amazon TV or Roku, you can go back and you can do the exact same thing. We're going to go over to one of my good friends, and he was just a, a, a surprise, but just a wonderful guy. He's a close, close friend of Dr. George C. Frazier, none other than Delano A. Johnson. And Delano A. Johnson talked about, I refuse to live talented and broke. And we're going to get that special message from him. And then we come back. Dr. George C. Frazier is going to talk about hashtag stay the course. He's going to talk about the power networking conference. He might send a special invitation to some of you to, to come join us. Come join us in Houston. And something he's doing with Frazier Nation. You, you don't want to miss it. Um, it's something that every single one of you, you want to be a part of. You want to share it with your network. Yeah. You want, to, you want to pay it for it. All right, Dr. George C. Frazier, we back in less than two minutes. We're going to go over to Delano A. Johnson. He's up in New York, New York. So nice, they named it twice. I refuse to live talented and broke. We'll be right back. I live in a city where there are more creative people per square mile than any other place on the planet. The question is, 
how many of them are successful, how many are just like I was, talented and broke. Being broke is more than just not having money. It's failure to turn opportunities into profitable businesses and relationships that last. <laughs> My mother always said, people perish for lack of knowledge. A compass takes you in the direction of your destiny, but knowledge of obstacles and distractions will ensure you arrive safely. My mentor once said to me, if I had half your talent, I'd have four times my wealth. Since then, I made a promise to God. If he would help me unlock my earning potential, I would pay it forward and help others do the same. That's why I wrote this book. As God made us too talented to live our lives broke. And that includes you. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission to empower, to inspire, and to provide the resources necessary for you, the entrepreneur, to execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. I want Dr. George C. Frazier to talk about Power Networking Conference, a little bit about Frazier Nation. Uh, he'll probably share how you can connect, how you can participate. Um, I will say this much about the Power Networking Conference is one of the top top five business conferences to attend, according to Forbes magazine. They wrote that at one point, one of the top five business conferences. They didn't say one of the top five black business conferences. They didn't say one of the top five business conferences for those folks that are networking. No, they said one of the top five business conferences. And so when you look at the conferences you have scheduled in these upcoming months, ask yourself, is the Power Networking Conference on that list? And if it isn't, then I want you to listen closely to what Dr. George C. Frazier has to say. If you've attended in the past and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to get back, I want you to listen to what Dr. George C. Frazier has to say. And if you're out there and you're listening right now and you're telling yourself, you know, I like this, Shay. I like the feeling of this community. I, I like being part of this. We we'll exist all over. And so Dr. George C. Frazier then is going to gravitate and tell you something he's doing with Frazier Nation because some of you are like, wow, to be in this conversation. Um, I showed up tonight to actually listen but I've been taught my well, it's taught so well, just participating right now with Dr. Joy C. Frazier's, and he has other folks that are just like him, just like you, that do share their knowledge. And he'll talk about a community and a nation, not a community, a nation he's created so that others can be a part of something, not so much for themselves, but for someone else. They can bring their time, their talent, their treasure, their gifts, their experience, their expertise, and they can put it all together to do something to uplift those that they will never meet for future generations to come. They're doing their part. So Dr. George C. Frazier, if you can, go ahead and, and take a few minutes, talk about the Power Networking Conference, talk about Frazier Nation, and, and then later on, we're gonna close out, and right before we do, you gotta talk about hashtag stay the course. I just love that, and because that has kept me, man, in some very dark time. I can tell myself, stay the course. Just, just stay the course. Make changes, but stay the course. You gotta stay the course. All right, Dr. George C. Frazier, I turn it over to you, my brother. All right. Uh, the Power Networking Conference, and it sounds like most of the people that you, you called out, if they're still with us, it's almost one o'clock. Um, right. it, it, it depends on where you are in the world, Dr. George C. Frazier. Right. For That's some true. folks right now, it's early. It's just eight o'clock. They're just getting home. Other yeah, he, folks like in Germany, like Sheila Reynolds, they're just waking up. And we have some folks in Australia. <laughs> um, but but, but, but Linda Reese told me to tell you many, she's still uh, out there. Kim Martin told me to tell you she's still out there. <laughs> many of our listeners uh, are friends and many of them uh, have been to the power networking conference and as you mentioned you you, you teed it up beautifully uh, Forbes named it one of the top five conferences not to be missed in America not one of the top five black conferences but it's a place where you come to learn and to grow to connect and to prosper it is about learning we focus on only two things business and money Two things, business and money, everything related to economics, because that is what we must focus on in the 21st century as black people, and that is economics. So that's what we focus on. We do have a third, uh, secondary, or it's a third, let's call it, second tier focus, and that would be wellness. 
psychological wellness and physical wellness because they're connected and we are outside of our mind we are not in our right mind so i'll leave it at that we'll unpack that at the power networking conference but the best and brightest you name five or six people who are faculty members of the conference, including you, Shay, including Trevor, including Kim Yancey, uh, including Brother Bedford, including Cheryl Woods. I'm sure that there are more on here uh, than I know about that have served a term of faculty uh, at the Power Networking Conference. It is the place you want to be. It's the people you want to meet. It is the network that you want to be a part of. This is where you will learn and grow and do your business and recycle our dollars and to coach and to, to get coached and to be mentored and to be a better human being, to, to move you from good to amazing. Because being good in the 21st century for us will not be good enough. We, we must be amazing. Um, so it is uh, next, uh, not next year, it's already next year. It is this year, July 8th through the 11th at, um, in Houston. This is our second year in Houston, uh, Texas at the Hilton of America is a five star hotel. Um, we sell it out every year, months in advance. So I urge you to go to powernetworkingconference.com and uh, register. It's all the Christmas holiday is over and you may need a little recovery time, I'm not sure, but go to powernetworkingconference.com and register. So I'm going to give you some incentives, but it's going to be a limit on it and it's going to be a timeline. It's 24 hours. I'm going to give you a promotion code. And the promotion code, when you put it in, will give you a 60% discount on the registration. I said 60% discount on the rack rate registration. Go to powernetworkingconference.com. So here's the promotion code. Write this down. It's good for 48 hours. Here's the promotion code. Damn good deal. That's what it is. Just put in there Dam, D-A-M-N, good, G-O-O-D, deal. And you will get a 60% discount. You don't want to, <clears throat> you don't want to miss this conference. Um, this year, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins will be with us. Uh, Dr. Julius Garvey, I don't know how many of you know who Julius Garvey is, but Dr. Julius Garvey, who is an actual medical doctor, is the son of Marcus Garvey. He's 86 years old and he is awesome. You think I have energy? He has energy and apples don't fall too far, uh, too far from the tree. So if you know anything about how powerful Marcus Garvey was, you'll meet his son who's 86 and just phenomenal. We're going to do a special interview with him. He's going to get a Legends Award and so forth. So, and there's many others. This is the year where we honor black men with our Cool, Black, and Brilliant Award or Black, Cool, and Brilliant Award. So there are going to be four dynamic men that will be honored with that award. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You're going to know them. You're going to love them. You're going to scream when you see them. Um, so join us. Take advantage of the deal, 60% off. Just put in the promotion code box, damn good deal. It will automatically reduce it by 60%. So that's the offer I make. For those of you who are staying so, so staying with us up uh, so late. And, <laughs> wow. I, Why you gotta keep saying it's so late? I mean, never, we got, never we got folks a, like Kimberly I, I, Grant I, I, Boyce. So, clock in the morning i mean this is just like this is like really great and really different we, we, we got people like Kim, kimberly grant uh boy she said i've served for many years i'm still in the place what are you talking about she's still here karen crockett cherry um founder of success women's conference the largest conference in right. women's conference in mississippi said i got my ticket for pnc 2019 uh kimberly martin said she's going to be there jennifer harris is still there Linda Reese still keeps making comments. There's other folks that are out there, but I keep mentioning Linda Reese because I can't believe she's up myself. 
Right. But anyway, in all seriousness, let me get back and be dead serious. We're coming down home stretch. We're going to close this thing out. And the way we're going to close it out. Did, did you get to mention Frazier Nation? I want you to take two minutes, at least three minutes, to talk about Frazier well, Nation. Well, Frazier Nation, we launched, or we birthed Frazier Nation last year. Oh, my God. Um, and, you know, for 32 years, I spent my life building a global network. The 1.2 million black people in my digital platform and uh, networks are awesome i've spent my life writing about the power and importance of effective networking and building effective networks but we are now in a period where unless we start acting as a nation things will not change from us for us and in a network there are individual objectives where we help each other in a nation there is a global objective there is a community ob objective there is a cultural objective where we're all working in some way on the same thing to lift our people up Thus, we born Fraser, Fraser Nation, citizens of generational wealth, where one is committed to demonstrated excellence, equity, and investment in entrepreneurial thinking. I did not say entrepreneurship. I said entrepreneurial thinking. That is taking responsibility and taking ownership for our own lives. And once you take responsibility and take ownership of your own life, that can play the seeds, lay the foundation, plant the seeds, for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is no joke it is not for everybody in fact we know some negroes that should not be within a hundred yards of owning a business okay it's no joke so we have to inculcate into our people entrepreneurial thinking understanding who we are how beautiful how powerful how magnificent we are, we are God's first people. We educated civilization. Our masters reversed that and said that they civilized us. No, 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 no. Go to Egypt and see and witness with your own eyes the first great civilizations of humankind built by Africans. Af Egypt is in Africa. It is not in the Middle East. And it was Africans that built the pyramids of Giza that still stand 7,000 years later. Do you think the Empire State Building will still be standing 7,000 years from now? Hell to the no. So that's what Fraser Nation is about. It is designed to promote who you are and what you have to offer. That's what it's designed to do. It is the next level of thinking of recycling black dollars. You know, we're, we're recycling black human capital, intellectual capital, and resources. It's a place you go. It is really sort of an online version of the Power Networking Conference, except it is designed as a nation. So if you want to get training and find excellence black excellence you will find it in our citizenship it is not a membership based initiative that was fraser net we have trashed that it is now fraser nation and it is citizen based so you have to apply for citizenship just like you have to apply for citizenship of any nation and nations don't just take anybody that's Fraser Nation we want you to go on onefrasernation.com 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 and apply for citizenship and apply for what's the website give them the website one more time Dr. Fraser onefrasernation.com one O N E, not the number one. O N E, FrazierNation.com. So when he says one, it means O N E. You got to spell the word one out. So let's put number one. Spell it out. One, one. FrazierNation.com. And the first page says, "Welcome home." Mm. 
That's what it says. We're going to build global nation using technology. Got it. Now, Dr. George C. Frazier, we're going to have you close us out in just a moment. You got to tell the story about being good and going to amazing. I mean, we got to hear the hashtag stay the course. But uh, for those folks like Tasha Taylor, who's out there right now, Sanaya, who's out there, they're having a little trouble with the code. Damn good deal. If they have trouble with the code, is there is there an email that they can send an email to someone or can they you, go to they a website? Send if you're having a problem with the code, stuff happens. You know, these websites are prickly. Yeah. So if you're having a problem with the code, email me, gfraser at frasernet.com. Gfraser at frasernet.com. Say, I'm in. Put your cell phone number on there. Office tomorrow. Because I we just really developed it today, but quite frankly. Uh, yeah. So if you're having problems with it, email me. Okay. So they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna hit you up and you can go to G G C Fraser at what's what's the email again they should send it to, Dr. Fraser? Uh, G Fraser at Frasernet.com. F R A S is it stamp E R. G Fraser at FraserNet. Email me any issues. I will handle it. Of course, we will honor uh, our commitments. And and then and then when you when you do that, put I'm in. When you send them an email, put I'm in. You gotta put I'm in. That's the code. When we come back, Dr. George C. Fraser is going to close us out. By the way, and we want to thank him for that. We're gonna go over to Sacconi Prince, and we'll be back in less than two minutes. He'll talk about bigger bolder better and then we're going to have dr george c frazier close us out um with one of my one of my favorite stories by the way uh, one of his no, favorite... no no shay shay <laughs> what i have a thousand stories you do oh and yeah I... but but when i say story 40 years now <laughs> do i remember the good to amaze i don't remember all of the detail i haven't told that story in oh, a long oh, okay. Okay, no, no 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 when i say that i want you, I want you to tell the principle not the story the principle which is that first you must be if you're good then you're only going to be if you're if you're good you'll get paid poorly if you're average you'll be paid good if you're excellent you'll be paid uh, great but if you're amazing that's the level you want to get to and that's the one point okay, you start. that that story yes yes yes, yes. that's right. the story not 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 the good the great but um the reason I want you to hear that is that you'll be paid at one level below where you are so that, I, I'll explain that's, that. That, that. That's it. That's that's how I want you to close it out. So as an entrepreneur, okay. with, with the messages to you is hashtag stay the course. And he's going to close what he always talks about is that you be, we perform in excellence. It's not about the pay, but we're always moving towards excellence. But amazing is where you want to be. All right, we'll be back in just less than two minutes. We'll be back. And we're closing out. Dr. Frazier, we appreciate your time. We're going to close out. I'm going to go over to Sacconi Prince. He talks about, uh, with, oh, bigger Bolder, better. We'll be back in just a moment. Sacconi Prince, my man down in Mobile, Alabama. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How you doing today? This is Sacconi Prince of SacconiPrince.com, where we make motivation personal by introducing you to yourself. And I'm in the Happy Uncle's News Tribe, giving you my thought of the week. And I'm doing it because you guys rock. And today is my January 1st. I'm here at Cooper Riverside Park enjoying this beautiful day. But I wanted to take the time out to send this video to talk about bigger, better, and bolder. That's right. My thought of this week is bigger, better, and bolder. You know, as we go into 2020, a lot of us, we've had plans. And we have plans for a lot of stuff that we want to do. But I want to challenge you to make your plans bigger, to make them better, and make them bolder. In order for you to make them bigger, you have to have a wider vision. You have to be able to see further than you can even now. So you have to be able to dream big. But how you make them better? You make them better by getting people to help you with them, calling someone alongside to actually be there for you, to help you make them better. But then in the end, they definitely have to be bolder. They have to be something that no one has seen before. You have to stretch the limits of your imagination and do more than you've ever done in your life. That's the only way you're gonna make a lasting impact and leave a legacy for those coming behind you. And look, this is Sacconi Prince of SacconiPrince.com where we make motivation personal. We're introducing you to yourself. And I'm in the happy entrepreneur shop giving give you my thought of the week. My thought of the week is be bigger, be better, and be bolder. Hey, back over to you, Shay.
It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome back to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission to empower, to inspire, and provide you the resources you need to execute the vision you have for the people you want, you're called to serve. We want to thank Dr. George C. Frazier for sharing his seven secrets to su having a successful business. I want to thank him for giving, uh, I think he's broke records for a lot of time, um, but being here this evening and sharing time with us. We want to encourage you first all to go over to powernetworkingconference.com. Uh, Bridget Carter says she's getting the error that says the promo code is only good for specific products. Um, as Dr. George C. Frazier said, he'll repeat okay. again, if you're having a challenge, there's an email which he'll give you that you can email him. When you gotcha. email him, you're going to put count me in, count me in, and someone from his office will contact you tomorrow. He said tomorrow, tomorrow. Gotcha. The email gotcha. he gave was gfraser at frasernet.com. It was gfraser at fraser, F R A S E R, net.com. In the subject line, put count me in and then put hey i was on the happy entrepreneur show and had a challenge and put your phone number in there so make sure you, you put a phone number in your email so if they email you and you don't hear from them you know there's a number if they have a question they can reach out to you as well um, but he will honor the 60 percent discount so to say hey count me in i had a 60 percent discount that's important i had a 60 percent discount for 48 hours so he will reward you if your email is in and it meets the timeline, which is 48 hours, and you had a challenge, then he will honor the 60% discount that he gave. Things do happen. We understand that. So once again, Dr. Frazier, thank you. Thank you for, for all of the viewers, for all of the Happy Entrepreneur Tribe. Thank you for paying this message forward. Thank you for all the digital note takers, Dr. Frazier. So many note takers have been out there like Tisha Taylor and Dee Wilkins and Bridget and Jacqueline and Ayana and Anna and Jahara Soy said, tell him I'm still here. Tell the doc I'm still here. Uh, Jahai, I don't know where you're from. I don't know if he even knows you, but he said he's, person. oh, Akron, Ohio. They're, they're still in the house. They said, the person said to let you know they're still in the house. And so many folks that are still out there um, right now. So Dr. Frazier, again, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, go ahead and close us out, man, and talk a little bit about the importance of being able to perform one level above and that we must all be amazing. There's a new model in a world that is now highly competitive, if you want to get paid at the level in which you believe that you are worth. So, today, this is especially true for black people because our parents told us that we're going to have to be twice as good to get half as much. Uh, they were right then and they're still right because if you're black and mediocre in America, you better leave. So the standards have changed, have shifted. If you are poor in your work, in the 21st century, you will not get paid. It will be very difficult for you to earn money with the competition uh, and the knowledge levels that will be needed to do work in America in the 21st century. So if you're poor, you will not get paid. Poor work. If you're good at what you do, you will be paid poorly. If you're excellent at what you do in the 21st century, you will be paid good. And only if you are amazing at what you do, will you be paid excellently. So we all have to ramp up our game. We must be committed to personal growth and development, constant never-ending improvement, and lifelong learning. We have to invest in ourselves. That's embedded in one of the seven rules for succeeding in life and in business. I am at the top of my game. I'm 75 years old. I'm at the top of my game. Last year, I spent $13,000 on personal growth and development, conferences, workshops, seminars, CDs, books, you name it. $13,000. And I'm already the best at what I do. And I'm still at 75 
investing in me at 75. The question is, what are you investing in you? 2% of your annual income should be invested in personal growth and development. You. What percentage of your annual income are you spending on fertilizing your mind and evolving and changing and growing? What are you investing to facilitate that? And let me close out with this. Brothers and sisters, you either grow or you die. Every single thing that God has created, everything that God has created is either growing or dying. There is no in between. You cannot stand still. That's why shows like this at one o'clock in the morning are so important. We are ingesting material. We're talking to each other. You're sharing other points of view with your interstitials and your and, and, and your, your, your two minute. It's, it's wonderful. We're fertilizing and feeding and cultivating our minds. And this must never stop. You learn until you die. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, once again, thank you so much, Dr. George C. Frazier. For all those folks that are listening out there, we appreciate you. We love you. Uh, again, Dr. Frazier, um, we'll certainly have you back. We'll see you at the Power Networking Conference. Head over to PowerNetworkingConference.com. Get your ticket. Uh, for those folks that are listening and saying, oh, I heard about Frazier Nation, go to 1-O-N-E, one Frazier Nation.com. Again, one FraserNation.com and welcome home. You'll see that when you get there. Again, thank you so much. For those folks that are out there and want the notes, text the word MAKEOVER to 202 999 3515. I want you all to look right below the video as we close out. Look right below the video and I want you to write these words that today is my January 1st. Hashtag stay the course. Today is my January 1st. I get a rebirth. I can start over again. Today is my January 1st. I can collaborate. Today is my January 1st. I can choose my friends wisely. Today is my January 1st. More importantly, I can invest in myself. I can be amazing, but I can be a giver because you believe in the giver's economy, which is the person out gives the competition out earns the competition and that's you you're a giver not a getter with that being said thanks for joining we appreciate you for those folks that are hearing my name for the very first time uh, my name is Shay Brown the happy entrepreneur make it a great day everyone you've been watching the happy entrepreneur show we'll make good things happen. we connect again next time today is your January 1st God bless this will close us out and I'll be right with you Dr. Frazier thank you very much guys we love you we'll talk to you soon made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.